So as a church, we've been looking at the foundation of disciple making, Christ-like disciple making. And we've journeyed through Christ-likeness, discipleship, disciple making, quiet time. We've entered the foundation and by God's grace, we've finished with the four experiences. Today, we are going to, thank you very much. We are going to what we call the assurances. The assurances. What is an assurance? If we say assurance, it is a state of being sure about something. When you are in a state where you are so sure, you are sure, you know and know and know, and know that what you are saying is sure, or what you know is sure. It's a strong knowledge about something. Strong, definite knowledge about something. When we say assurance, it is a strong conviction. You have a strong conviction concerning something. You, you are, it's a certainty. It is a confidence. You have a confidence. It is an assurance. Assur- assurance is a guarantee. You have a guarantee. Assurance is a surety. You are sure, you, you are sure and sure that this thing is sure. Assurance is the testimony. You see, when you go to court, it's not, it is about testimony. I wish I had one of our lawyers to share with us. It is about, it's about the pink sheet. It is the testimony. It's not about, we want the testimony. Assurance. Assurance is evidence. You see, people can say whatever they want to say. But you have the evidence of God's goodness. Which is an assurance. You see the blind man in John chapter 9. You see people can doubt. People can say Jesus is not God. People can say he's dead. But me, one thing I know that once I was blind. But now I am healed. It is an evidence. Assurance is an evidence. So I like, even though Thomas is, is a doubter, I like what the revelation. In John chapter 20 from verse 20, you see, he didn't come to church. That's why you have to come to church on Sunday. Thomas did not come to church the day Jesus appeared. So he didn't have the evidence. So they told him, we'll see Jesus. He said, no, me, I will not believe. Unless I put my hands inside where they, they pierce with the nails. <laughs> then Jesus he came in his grand star. The Bible records that the door was locked, but Jesus entered. Ha! Hey! And he stood before Thomas. I said, this is my palm. And when he saw it, he saw the evidence. And he said, my Lord and my God. You, people can say Jesus is not God, but you have the assurance. Jesus is your Lord and your God. It is evidence. But I like this one. The guy is called Nathaniel. It is in John chapter 1. You see, from verse 45, Philip was, he, was, he, was, he knew that this was the Messiah. He went to Nathan and said, hey, we found the Messiah, the one the prophet wrote about, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he stood still and said, ah, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? He said, come and see the evidence. I said, come and see. Come, tell your neighbor, come and see. Assurance is evidence. <laughs> Then Jesus drew near. And then he said, wow, an Israelite indeed. One in whom there is no deceit. What? The man said, how did you know? Not, ah. So what, before you stood under the tree and Philip came to you, I saw you. What? 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 You are rabbi. You are the son of God. It, it is evidence. Assurance is evidence. In our context, when we talk about assurance, we are talking about the strong conviction, the strong testimony, the strong guarantee that a believer has 
concerning certain things that has been graciously won for him through the redeeming work of Jesus on the cross. A strong conviction, ground, guarantee, basis, testimony that you have concerning certain things that has been graciously won for you through the redeeming work of Jesus on the cross. This is what we mean by assurance. And from today, we are coming to, we are beginning a journey on the five assurances. So, it, we, are, we are all thinking through that. Uh, why, should, why do we need assurance from a God who does not lie? Why should God be interested in any way in giving us an assurance if he does not lie? In Numbers chapter 23 from verse 19, it says that God, he's not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should change his mind. Has he not said it? He will, won't he fulfill it? Let's read it. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. Yes. God is not human that he should lie. He's not human that he should lie. Why is it that we have a God who does not lie but we need assurance? Not a human being that he should change his mind. He can't change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Yes. Does he promise and not fulfill? I like some first Samuel chapter 15 from verse 20. He said the Holy One of Israel will not, cannot, will not lie. Let's read it. First Samuel chapter 15 from verse 29. First Samuel chapter 15 from verse 29. Yes. He who is the glory of Israel. He who is the glory of Israel. Does not lie or change his mind. He does not lie nor change his mind. For he is not a human being. And he said in Joshua chapter 23 from verse 14. That he said you yourself you know in your heart and in your soul. That none of the good things that the Lord promised us fail. Each one of them came to pass. Joshua 23 14. Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. You know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Why? Why, why, why do we need assurance from a God who does not lie? In 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 22, the Bible says of Jesus that in him is no sin and no guile, no deceit, no lie was found on his tongue. 1 Peter 2.22 He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. How about the Holy Spirit? We are told in John chapter 16 from verse 13 that when the spirit of truth has come, he, he, he speaks the truth that he is called the spirit of truth. Why do we need assurance from a God who does not lie? It's because man has a problem. Yes. You know, problem in daddy's voice on a perfect uh, Resurrection Sunday. What is your problem? <laughs> Man faced the problem of doubt and to some extent forgetfulness. And in a world with Satan, in James chapter 1 from verse 5, let's read all the way to verse 7. He said, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who freely gives without finding for He shall receive. But let that man make sure that he acts in faith and not doubt. For the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea being tossed by, by, by the air, by Ch the wind. James chapter 1 from 5 to 8. Yes. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. Yes. Who gives generously to all without finding fault. Yes. And it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. But when you ask, yes. you must believe and not doubt. You must believe and not doubt. Uh -huh. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, mm -hmm. blown and tossed by the wind. Yes. That person should not expect... He to, should not expect... What? To receive anything to, from the this Lord. This is why the, the, the book before the Hebrews, chapter 11 from verse 6, it says that, see, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to God must first know that he exists. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Sit down. In Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1, 
The Bible says that the serpent was more cunning than any beast over the face of the earth. And the beast, the serpent, appeared to the woman. And, and he said, that, did God really? Some Bible versions say really. Other Bible says indeed. Let's read it. Genesis chapter 1. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Yes. He said to the woman. He, the, the serpent said, said to the woman. Did God really say? Did God really? Whether your mind or Satan, there are points in your Christian journey. You, you will fall into the temptation of, did God really? Did God indeed? This is why we are talking about assurances. This is why we are spending the energy on assurances. You know, I was doing a transaction with one gentleman in my office. He said, oh, you know me, I'm in the office. Why would I choose? I said, Master, we need witnesses. I can't be so foolish and say, hey, the person has taken us how much from me and we didn't have it now. No, I can't be so uh, naive. Find a word for me. <laughs> you, we, we, need a, we need a guarantee. There must be something to prove that this thing is sure. Even God gives us assurance. How, how less you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, let's take it from verse 15 all the way to verse... Yes, 1 Chronicles chapter 15. We are taking it 16 from verse 15. We are taking it to verse 17. It is also in Psalm 105 from verse 9 to 10. 1 Chronicles 16, 15. Yes. He remembers his covenant forever. You see, God goes to every length because of the indeed thought we may have. And he remembers his covenant. And what does he do? The promise he made for a thousand generations. The promise he made to a thousand generations. Uh -huh. The covenant he made with Abraham. He made the covenant with Abraham. He didn't finish there. Uh -huh. The oath he swore he to swore Isaac. He swore an oath. He swore an oath. He swore an oath over the covenant. And he did it to who? He confirmed it to Jacob he as a decree. He did it to Isaac. He confirmed it in Jacob. He established it in Israel. Put your hands together for the Lord. God goes every length to give you assurance. The ultimate, the signet, the blood that signed, the ink that signed God's assurance is the cross. He has done so many things. The church, the fellowship, the fivefold, all of them giving us assurance. The ultimate is the blood of Jesus. Maybe you don't understand. Let's read Hebrews chapter 6 from verse, let's take it from verse 13. Hebrews chapter 6 from yes. verse 13. Yes. When God made his promise to Abraham. Now listen carefully. This is God. This is not a man. When God made his promise to who? Abraham. Yes. Since there was no one greater for him to swear by. He said, God, he wants to give Abraham assurance. Hey, me, me, Shrao. Hey. He said, I, 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 want to, I want to prove to you that me, I will bless you. And he looked left. He didn't see anybody. He looked right. He didn't see anybody. He looked in front of him. There was nobody. He looked behind him. There was nobody. So he swore by himself. I, I said, this, I'll do it. You know, somebody, I offended someone. someone. And then the person... I said, I promised you, I will not do this thing again. And the person asked me uh, some few days later that, eh, I'm going to do this. W will you do the thing that you did there? I said, eh, me, I will do it. Pe -pe -pe. Because I don't want to fail. God wants to, well, God, he, he said he will bless you. But he himself, he's, he wants to prove to you again. So God, he will not lie, but he's swearing on top of the truth. Hey. Let's read on. He swore by himself saying, Yes. I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. Yes. And so after waiting patiently. Wait, wait for, take it from verse 16 now. 16. Yes. People swear by someone greater than themselves. See, people swear by someone greater than themselves. You see the marriage ceremony. They are going to swear before us and God. Yes. They swear before someone who is greater than them. When you go to the court, you swear. You, 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 you swear to someone greater. That's what people do. But God, what happened? 
And the oath confirms what is said. And an oath gives an assurance of what has been and said. And puts an end to all arguments. And it puts an end to what? You see? <laughs> it was Jacob. He was told that your son, we have seen him. He's not dead. Is that not it? He's in e- Egypt. We have found him. And he, they gave him evidence. That we have met him. We have, and we, he said, he can't believe. But when he, he saw the chariot, he said, it's okay. I will go. I will go and meet my son. You say, I need no. That's why the songwriter said, I need no other argument. argument. I, I need please, can you no other plea. It, it is enough. enough. That Jesus died and that he died for. Sing it to yourself. I I need no Let's finish the verse. Let's finish the chapter. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear. He wanted you to get the picture very clear that he, God, he doesn't change his mind concerning his promises. To the heirs of what was promised, he Uh confirmed it with an oath. He confirmed it with an oath. God did this. Yes. So that by two unchangeable things. So that by two unchangeable things in which... In which it is impossible it, for God to lie. Impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible that God should lie. We who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us yes. may be greatly encouraged. Wow. You see, you need assurance so that you'll be greatly encouraged. Because this life has nothing lasting to offer. I was talking to someone. And the person said, oh, very soon you have learned this thing. You know what he said. And I said, mm, it has, I've come to see that nothing in this, in this world lasts forever. I told the person that this thing, I had it in the glory of its days. But just a few days, I can't use it again. Nothing in this world lasts. Therefore, if you have assurance, if you have assurance, you have hope. So, what about assurance are we going to look at? I'm not going to make the message for the next preacher difficult. So I'll make the message very short. We are going to look at assurance of salvation. Then we will look at assurance of forgiveness of sins. Then we'll look at assurance of answered prayer. Then we'll look at assurance of victory over temptation, over sin, over Satan, and over the world. That's the fourth assurance. Let me take it again. It's assurance of victory over temptation, over sin, over Satan, and over the world. In fact, that assurance, it will blow your mind. Hallelujah. Then we have assurance of divine guidance. Assurance of divine guidance. These are the five assurances that my colleagues and I will be laboring on. So let me give just the surface of assurance of salvation. And then my message. Oh, 
I'll leave the time for the next preacher. <laughs> when we talk about assurance of salvation, we are talking about that strong conviction, that strong testimony that a believer has that because he or she has accepted Jesus as Lord and has surrendered to his lordship, he has eternal life or she has eternal life. This is the whole point of assurance of salvation. It's, it's the assurance simply says that your, the strong conviction grounded testimony that because you have accepted Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, you have surrendered to his lordship over your life, you have eternal life. In John chapter 10 from verse 27 and 28, he said, my sheep hear me and they know my voice. They, don't, they, will, they will not go to any other place. In fact, I give them eternal life and no one can take it out of their hands. Who will take it out of my hands. John yes. chapter 10 from 27. Yes. My sheep listen to my voice. Yes. I know them. Yes. And they follow me. Yes. I give them eternal I life. I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. And they shall never. No one can snatch them out of my. It is an assurance of salvation. It is. You, when you meet people and say, Are you born again? Say yes. So when Jesus comes today, will you go? He say, I don't know. You know, we, one thing that we are so sure about is that we don't know anything. Master, you don't have assurance. Hey, you know, they were interviewing some people on the street. And say, The person said that all I know is that. We all don't know anything. I said, you don't have assurance. <laughs> you don't have assurance. First John chapter 5. Let's read it. Let's read from verse 11. Let's read all the way to verse 13. First John chapter 5 from verse 11 to 13. Yes. And this is the testimony. This is the testimony. This is the guarantee. This is the evidence. This is the assurance. God has given us eternal life. God, he has given us eternal life. And this life is And in this his son. life, this eternal life is where? In his son. It's in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Do you have the son of God? Do you have the son of God? Do you have the son? Do you really, really have the son of God? Then I assure you, you have eternal life. And whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Yes. At the verse 13. 13. Yes. I write these things to you. See, I'm writing these things to you. You are born again. But I'm giving you this epistle because... Who believe in the name of the Son of God so yes. that you may know that you have eternal so life. So that you may know. You will have a guarantee. You will have an assurance that you have eternal life. In Romans chapter 8 from verse 15 to 16. Let's read that one. Romans chapter 8, 15 to 16. Romans chapter 8, 15 and 16. Yes. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves yes. so that you live in fear again. Yes. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. Wonderful. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. Wow. And the spirit himself testifies and with our spirit. And the spirit himself testifies with our spirit. It's a testimony. It's a conviction residing in our spirit man that we are sons and daughters of God. Assurance of salvation. Let's read First John. Sorry, John chapter 1. Let's read from verse 12 and verse 13. John chapter 1 verse 12 and verse 13. Yes. Yet to all who did receive him, Yes. To those who believed in his name. To do, those who, it doesn't matter where you come from. You can, it doesn't matter the tribe. It, it doesn't matter which part of the globe, the, the earth you are. It doesn't matter which language, which tribe. It doesn't matter whether you've been to school or not. It doesn't matter about, nothing matters. Uh -huh. He gave the right to become children of God. As long as you give yourself to him. You submit to his lordship. He gives you the right. Uh -huh. Children, mm -hmm. born not out of natural descent. It is not out of natural descent. Nor of human decision. You know, is that who says that if you are born in a garage, you are not a car. <laughs> it's not natural. It's above. Uh -huh. 
or of a husband's will. Oh, I, I, oh, I like this. <laughs> it's not by a will of the husband, no. Uh, it's spiritual. But born of God. But born of God. But let me end with this verse. It is in Acts chapter 4. Let's read from verse 11 and the verse 12. Acts, Acts chapter, chapter 4, 4 verse, verse 11. 11 and 12. Yes. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected. Yes. Which has become the cornerstone. He has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. Salvation is found in no one else. For Salvation, eternal life, is found in no one else. You see, if you don't have this assurance residing in you, your Christian life will be very shaky. You, you can even lose your faith. Assurance is critical. There is no salvation in no one else. Uh -huh. For there is no other name under heaven. There is no other name under heaven. Maybe you, you want to be saved after heaven. The, well, so far as we are under this sun, eh, anything, any human being under this sun, there is no other way. Hey! You see, this assurance will even affect how you evangelize. There is no other way. This is the gospel. There is no salvation in no man except Jesus Christ. You want to rise up and be on your feet?